We're going to look at how we use binomial distribution in the statistics GCSE. We need to know the conditions for the binomial distribution, understand notation, calculate probabilities and use the mean. So we're going to start off just thinking about what is the binomial distribution. Well, bi, like bicycle, is two. Okay, so there are two options here. In this case, either success or failure. Let's say you were flipping a coin. You can obviously get either heads or tails, and to make this binomial, you need to say one of those is a success. So for example, if you call heads, then heads is your success, and tails is your failure. Or if you were rolling a dice, to make this binomial, you'd have to choose one number to be success. For example, in some games, you need to roll a six to start. So if six, is, six was success and everything else was failure, then this would be binomial, six being success, one, two, three, four, five being failure, or in fact, in a test, you could either pass or fail. Obviously, pass would be success and fail would be failure in this case. So it's binomial, two options. And we'll look at the proper conditions later, but there needs to not only be two options, but these need to be independent with a fixed number of trials. And we'll come back to that in a minute. But basically, binomial is when you've got two options. And often at GCSE Maths, we draw a tree diagram to show these. So let's have a think about that. If we stick with the idea of flipping a coin, then if I just flipped one coin like this, I would either get heads or tails. If I flipped two coins, my first coin, I'd get heads or tails, and my second coin, I'd get heads or tails. So my outcomes would either be heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. And remember, if success is getting a head, then only one of these has no success at all. Success once, once, and success twice. In this case, success once, failure once. Okay, and so on. I could do this with three coins, four coins, five coins, etc. So here's another way of laying that out. I've got my coins here, one coin, and my outcome is heads or tails, two coins. These are my outcomes. Okay, now I don't really care though whether heads comes first or tails comes first. In both of these cases, I have one head and one tail. So I can think of that almost as the same thing. So if I slightly changed my notation, then I can gather these together because both of these cases is one success and one failure. So if I thought of it like this, where S is for success and F is for failure, then it kind of slightly changes how I can write it and I can gather things together a little bit more. And I'm going to extend that for three and four coins. Okay, so remember S is for heads, success is my heads and failure is my tails. And I could keep going on like this forever, but with binomial, I'd have a fixed number of doing it. So, for example, flip the coin five times or a hundred times or a thousand times. doesn't matter how many, but it would have to be a fixed number of times. OK, but at the moment, I'm not using the right notation, the right way we write binomial, because for binomial, it's about probability we're doing. So we think about those. So if I had the probability of success as P and the probability of failure as Q. And this is standard use of letters if you do um, statistics further on, whether that's at A-level maths or any A-level subject that involves statistics. P is always the probability of something happening, the success, and Q is the failure. Bearing in mind that because there are only two outcomes, the probability of success added to the probability of failure is 100% as a whole. For example, with the coins, the probability of heads added to the probability of tails is 1. Now, before we move on with any more of the binomial, I'm going to show you a link um, with binomial and something called Pascal's triangle. So just going to spend a couple of minutes on that because that's really helpful at GCSE statistics. So I'm just going to take this sort of triangle shape that we've made here. And I'm going to replace S with P for probability of success and Q with um, F with Q for probability of failure. And I'm going to simplify something. So for example, S, S, I could write as S squared, or in this case, P squared. So I'm just going to replace that with that notation. OK, so this is the updated version. And just to recap, it's very similar to the previous one, which was here. But I've just replaced the probability of success with P and failure with Q. And I've neatened it up a little bit. 
Okay, so here is my triangle. Now you might notice something here. So one coin makes P and Q, two coins, P squared, two PQ, Q squared, three coins, P cubed, three P squared Q, three P Q squared and Q cubed, etc. Now this is the one you might, might recognize the most from expanding double brackets, but basically this is what you've got. The first one is just P plus Q to the power of one. The second one is P plus Q squared. Then you have P plus Q cubed and the bottom one P plus Q to the power of four. So if I expanded my brackets each time, I would get this expression and these terms. And that will work, in fact, every time. And that's a really useful result. Now we've looked at quite a few things and we haven't really written much of it down yet. So we're just gonna write down some of what we've discovered so far and then we'll move on to looking at Pascal's triangle and then we'll do a couple of examples. Okay, so we'll start off reminding ourselves of the conditions that need to be met in order to use the binomial distribution. Okay, first of all, there needs to be a fixed number of trials. That means I can't go on flipping coins forever and ever and ever. I need to flip them 10 times or 7 times or 15 times or a million times, but a fixed number of times. So the first condition is a fixed number of trials, and we denote this by the letter N. Secondly, as we discussed with coin flipping or pass or failing a test or a dice, for example, a 6 or not a 6, there needs to be two possible outcomes for each trial, just success or failure. So if I was playing a football game, I can't have win, lose or draw because there's three outcomes. Binomial is two, by two, so there needs to be two possible outcomes for each trial, success or failure. And thirdly, these trials can't depend on each other, that is, they need to be independent. And hopefully you've already looked at independence earlier in the statistics course, but in this case, flipping a coin whether it gets heads or tails is independent of whether it got heads or tails last time. Rolling a dice, if you get a six or not, is independent of whether you got a six or not last time. These are independent events. Let's look at some notation. How does it look when we use binomial distribution? What notation do we use? Okay, it always looks like this. B stands for binomial. N is number of trials and P is the probability of success. You might notice earlier we were talking about PQ. We haven't talked about Q, the probability of failure, but since it's either success or failure and the probability of success plus failure equals one, Q is the same as one minus P. So you can always use that to calculate it. For example, this probability, this distribution here, this binomial distribution, has five trials, so I've done something five times, and the success each time has a 60% chance, 0.6 probability of success, so the failure would have to be 40%, 0.4 each time. You might sometimes, in some um, stuff online, see it written like this, with the X twiddles in front of it. That just is um, what you'll see when you move further up through education, and it's just talking about the variable X. You don't really need to worry about it at this point, you need to be more thinking of this part of it. And if we just return to this slide, what we were looking at earlier with these probabilities, we've got a key point, a note that we can make, which helps us calculate the um, binomial distribution probabilities. Okay, now this bit might seem a little bit confusing at this point, and we're going to do a worked example in a minute that makes sense of this. But basically, this is talking about the red writing here, and it's talking about if I flipped one coin, my probabilities were given here. Two coins, the expansion of this. Three coins, the expansion of this. Four coins, the expansion of this. And so for n, it would be p plus q to the power n. And we're just going to look at um, one more useful thing, Pascal's triangle, and then we will do an example or two. There was a famous mathematician called Pascal and he came up with this triangle, and this is the triangle. So it starts at the top with 1, and then 1, and 1. And then you start thinking about adding. So 1 always goes on the outside, and then if I had 
the sum adding up of those two, I'd have two, and then one at the end. And the next row, I would have one here. If I add one and two, I get three, three, one. And I'm going to start one here again. This time I'm adding one and three and getting four, three and three getting six, three and one, four and one, and so forth. One, five, ten, ten, five, one. And this is called Pascal's triangle. And we're just going to look at how this links to our probabilities. Okay, so if I put Pascal's triangle here over my probabilities, hopefully you can see that the coefficients, the numbers in front of the letters, are the same as Pascal's triangle. So this is the same, so we can always use Pascal's triangle to get the coefficient in front of the letter, the number in front of the letter. And that is, in fact, um, always going to work with binomials. So we'll quickly write that down and then we'll use it for a couple of examples. OK, we're at example one. The probability that a seed from a particular supplier produces flowers when it's planted is 75%. Four seeds are planted. Calculate the probability that exactly three of the seeds produce flowers and fewer than two of the seeds. OK, so first of all, let's write this as a binomial distribution. So for binomial, we're going to have to have binomial NP. The number of trials, well, four seeds are planted. So that's binomial four. And the probability P equals 75% chance of success, produces flowers, which is a decimal 0 0.75. And in case I'm going to need it in a minute, which I am, Q is the rest of the percent from 100%, so that's 25%, 0 0.25. Okay, so we're going to use this for part A and B. Part A, I want exactly three flowers. So probability, three flowers. And in fact, if you were looking at with X notation, be probability that X equaled three probability of three flowers. Now we're going to go back to Pascal's triangle and to use that to help us because if we want three flowers we want p cubed okay because we want probability that p happens three times three flowers and so it'll be p cubed and q because the powers have to add up to the number of trials, and that is a little one there that I don't see. So let's go back to Pascal's triangle um, to help me out. So Pascal's triangle, let's have a look. So this is when n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. So this is what I'm looking at here, when n equals 4. And this would be p to the power of 4 then p to the power of 3q, and then p squared q squared, p q cubed, and q to the power of 4. And that's always how it goes. Okay, so it starts off with n, then you take away 1 each time to the p, and you add 1 each time to the q, because of course the indices have to add to 4. Okay, but I want the p cubed cubit, which is 4. So I've got 4 p cubed Q. So I'm going to use that and go back to my example. So remember my coefficient here is 4. So I'm going to use that. 4p cubed Q. So this is going to be 4 times P, 0 0.75, cubed times Q, 0 0.25. And I can literally pop that into my calculator and I'll get 0 0.4 2, 2. Okay, and that's my probability that exactly three of the seeds produce flowers, so we're looking about 42% um, of the time exactly three of the seeds produce flowers. Now I want fewer than two of the seeds. So fewer than two. What options could I have for fewer than two? Well, I could have no seeds or one seed. I can't have two, I can't have three, I can't have four. So I just need to work out the probability of no seeds producing flowers and of one seed producing flowers. So probability of no seeds. And I'm adding it to probability of 
one seed. And if you wanted x notation again, this is probably the x is less than two. Okay, well, let's use our Pascal's triangle again. And we want, for this one, we want the term where it's p to the power of zero, so there's no p at all, so that was the q to the four one. And for this one, I want p with little one, so q must be three, and the coefficient, if you look at your Pascal's triangle for that one, is four again. Okay, so I'm going to add these two together, so this is 0 0.25 to the power of four, and this is four times 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 to the power of three. And you can just pop that in your calculator, and you'll get 0 0.0508, so 5% of the time, fewer than two seeds produce flowers. Okay, that's worked example one. I've got two more little notes to do, then one more example. So the first thing is, what if I wanted the mean of a binomial distribution? Well, that's easy enough. So the mean is just n times p, so the number of trials times by probability of success in each trial. So for example, if I had a binomial distribution of 5 and 0 0.6, my mean would equal 5 times 0 0.6, which is 3. Also, on your calculator, there is a button that looks like this, which you can use to calculate the coefficients. For example, when we looked at this, it can calculate this coefficient for you. And once you do stats at A level, that's quite useful. At this stage though, using Pascal's triangle is probably going to be the most useful method for you. So if you want to look into that more, you can, but at this stage, I do recommend using Pascal's triangle. Okay, one more worked example. Okay, for worked example two, we're looking at some sheep in a field. You've got three sheep and we're asked, why is this suitable for binomial? Well, we need to go back to our three um, conditions for a binomial to be met. Fixed trials, independent, two possible outcomes. So first of all, there are a fixed number of trials. You've got three. So three fixed trials. Okay. The second one is independent. Each sheep is independent of another, each other. So sheep are independent. And two possible outcomes, well, either they'll have twins or not twins. Okay, so I've shown it met the three conditions, so it is suitable for binomial. B. Well, let's actually put it as binomial then. B, binomial, number of trials, three, probability of success, 0 0.84. Probability that none of them have twins. So probability, no twins. Well, I've got three sheep, so I'm going to do my Pascal's triangle up to the third one for me to see what the coefficient's going to be. Okay, there's my Pascal's triangle. I'll want P with nothing, so I want no P, so it's going to have to be Q only. Okay, so it'll be Q cubed, and my Q cubed will be this one, so it's just one Q cubed, so that's going to be Q times Q times Q. Oh, I don't know Q yet. Well, if P is 0 0.84, Q is 1 minus 0 0.84, which is 0 0.16. So it's 0 0.16 cubed, which is... Okay, so I've got my probability of no twins, which is a very low probability. And now for C, I want to estimate the mean number of sheep that give birth to twin lambs for a flock of 20 pregnant sheep. So notice it's not 3 anymore, it's now 20. So for C, my binomial is 20, 0 0.84, and my mean is NP, which is 20 times 0 0.84, which is 16.8. So the mean number of sheep giving birth to twin lambs in 20 sheep would be 16.8. Now you have a go at the practice questions.